Hi, how you doing? I'm Aaron. And I'm Matthew. And uh, on this training video, we're going to discuss the uh, Trappist style of beer, the Triple. Um, now, a Triple is a very traditional style of Trappist ale, and by Trappist ale we mean uh, beers that are brewed by monks. Um, now, a Triple uh, differentiates itself from both the, young, the smaller beer, the Double, and the larger beer, the Quad, uh, being that it's the only one of these traditionally Trappist style beers that's light in color. Uh, which is very interesting. Um, now most of these beers uh, are going to have big Belgian yeast flavors and aromas, um, which is typical of most Trappist style beers. Um, and this uh, triple is going to hover really right around uh, 8%, although there is some ambiguity there. Some are a little bit lower and some actually range upwards towards closer to 10%. That's right. Today we have uh, West Mall's Trappist Trapel. Now, West Mall is a Trappist brewery, one of the only 11 now registered Trappist breweries. Uh, and this one comes from Belgium, which is where a great majority of them come from. Comes from Belgium. This one's a little bit higher on the ABV scale. It's nine and a half, clocks in at nine and a half percent. But one of the predominant characteristics of a Trapel is that you're not supposed to taste the alcohol at all. So even though it, it's nine and a half percent, when we actually uh, dive into the beer, uh, we'll see how much heat we're actually getting off of that 99.5%. Uh, sometimes these guys are dangerous the way that alcohol can sneak up on you. Sure. Uh, West Mall uh, is the only brewery I believe that you can uh, easily get, well maybe not easily, but you can procure their mm -hmm. yeast strain. Many, many, many Trappist breweries are very, very protective about their, of, of their yeast strain. That's kind of their bread and butter. That's what makes their beer their beer. Uh, West Mall, you can get a yeast strain, yeast strain um, from them. Uh, I believe the first that I've ever known of is Lagunitas. Mm -hmm. The owner of Lagunitas, Tony McGee, uh, flew to Belgium. Uh, I guess the monks, he went over really well with the monks, and he flew back with uh, some West Mall yeast, and he threw it into his little something-something and made it to a little something wild. That's right, and uh, now this uh, yeast is actually available to home brewers. You can buy it through White Labs. Uh, which is really interesting. And also, um, this particular yeast strain is also utilized uh, by other Trappist breweries. Um, both Akel and uh, Vestflateren uh, use the West Mall yeast. They actually get it from the West Mall monks. Uh, it's very, very interesting. Yeah, now as we open this guy up, uh, this was the, uh, uh, this one was uh, developed in 1956, I believe was the last time that the recipe changed, and it hasn't changed since then. So, so what we're getting here is a little bit of carbonation. That's probably our fault. We probably agitated the bottles. Uh, I'm going to blame it on Aaron, not it's so much my fault. It's probably my fault. There you go. So this pour is almost champagne-like. Yeah, very lively carbonation here. If you've watched our double video, you notice that uh, this is quite a departure from the color of the double, mm -hmm. even though it's higher alcohol, um, which would imply maybe a more intense flavor. It's lighter in color. That does get and confuse a lot of people. Don't get confused. Uh, singles and uh, trapels are lighter in color. Doubles and quads are darker. Is that right? Um, actually, it's just the triples that are the lighter in color. Oh, sing mm -hmm. singles are darker yep, as well? Yep. Singles are sometimes referred to as Abbey Ales or Potter's Beer, um, which are also darker in color. So this, that's what makes these triples so unique, um, is that despite the fact that they have a lot of malt, uh, they don't use the same types of natural malt, uh, nor do they use roasted malt. Um, it's, used, it's basically a pale malt in combination with their house yeast strain. All right. Let's, let's take a look. Or stuff. Yeah, look. All right. It's got a very nice kind of peachy, golden color. Yeah, it's got a nice golden haze to it. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, that's a nice suspended yeast. Yeah, there's a little bit, I mean, it's not completely cloudy. Um, it's more of a very hazy. Um, it's absolutely typical for the style. Uh, this is really one of the quintessential um, examples of this style of beer. Yeah, if, if not the first, they were one of the first to brew a Trapel. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready to taste? Absolutely, let's smell it. Let's, let's taste it after we smell it. I'm jumping the gun here. Well, we're all anxious, but man, this nose can't be ignored. And it's very, very bright mm -hmm. on the nose. Yep, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of really big fruity notes. I get some pear, some peach. Yeah, very, a little bit of, yeah. A little bit of an apple flavor or aroma to it. Very bright, perky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you also get some of these, uh, some of the yeasty spices. There's a little bit of clove, a little bit of white pepper. 
Mm, but just very bright fruit. I mean, it's it's very intriguing. It's it's got it's it's an inviting type of aroma. Mm -hmm. um, nice, recognizable aromas. It's it's actually very very well done. All, All right, right, you ready to taste? I'm now ready to taste. All right. Well, uh, let me just start off by saying. Um, I don't know where they put it, but they did something with the nine and a half percent. Yeah, very, very well masked. There's mm -hmm. little, little heat on this at all. I mean, maybe just a touch on the back of the tongue right as you uh, swallow. Um, but it's very, very well masked for almost double digits ABV. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is pretty, a, a pretty dangerous drink. Um, a lot of this, you get a lot of those big, bright fruit notes. There's just a touch of a tart, um, almost like a like a slightly sour uh, apple, like a green apple type of a flavor to it. Just a little bit of tartness on the back end to make it refreshing, to help complement some of these more um, big and, and pulpy fruits, if you will. Yeah, a lot of Trappist beers, uh, as we've been talking about, really feature fruits, but a lot of the time they're, they're kind of maybe dark fruits, mm -hmm. dried fruit, dried fig, dried raisin, um, candied fruits. This one's more, seems more, both in aroma and taste, you get more of a fruit zest out of it. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. There's a little bit of citrus. It's, it's almost like a fruit salad. There's a lot of nondescript fruits going on, and mm -hmm. it's a big melange of flavors, mm -hmm. um, which is absolutely typical for the style and for Belgian beers in general. Now, let's talk a little bit about serving temperature. The, the double that we had before, uh, we let warm up a little bit. And uh, let's see, this one says serve it between 45 and 50 degrees. Right. So not quite as warm, just a little bit colder, but mm -hmm. uh, not straight out of the fridge. Either. Yeah, exactly. The, the warmer the beer gets, the more it'll really open up and, and allow you into some of its depth and complexity. Mm -hmm. And just like the double and just like the quad that we'll talk about, uh, the yeast is uh, in the bottle. Mm -hmm. This is bottle conditioned. So again, make sure you ask your guests whether or not they want the yeast in the bottle, left in the bottle, or if they want it in their drink. You know, I've actually had a guest ask for the yeast to be poured into a taster glass on the side, oh. and you know, because of some of the health benefits, uh, high brewer's yeast is very high in vitamin B, very high in potassium okay. and calcium. He actually took it as a shot, almost like a vitamin shot on the side, which I, it's the only time I'd ever seen that, but I thought it was pretty cool, and the guy really looked like he knew what he was doing. Well, health first. At, of course, of course. <laughs> now, what uh, we have this right now in a Chimay glass. Say I'm working at a brass tap and I don't have a Chimay glass. What could I use besides a Chimay glass? My Always. first recommendation, in fact, the correct recommendation, would be uh, to pour this into a snifter. One of your 10-ounce brass tap logoed snifters would be absolutely appropriate. Um, however, sometimes these, uh, these Trappist glasses, it is okay that we pour this into a Chimay glass. It does have this very, very wide mouth, uh, which does a couple of things. It allows, um, it allows the more surface area for the head to really let those, uh, those volatiles and, um, and some of that, that the phenolic, um, aromas really escape. And also, it has a very wide mouth, which distributes the beer across the entire, uh, or across the entirety of your palate. Um, as opposed to just dumping straight down the middle mm -hmm. as it is more inclined to do from something like a pint glass. Uh, but should you not have a Chimay glass or perhaps even a St. Bernardus chalice, yeah. which are also popular, um, by all means, um, a brass tap branded snifter is absolutely appropriate to serve this beer. And if you're serving it on draft, because you can get some of these in draft as well, mm -hmm. um, it's the same volume as well. We're still talking about the same size pour. So even though it might look it's a, like it's a different size looks, especially when it comes to beer glassware, can be really deceiving as far Absolutely. as volume goes. Um, just ask those restaurants that uh, serve 14-ounce uh, pint glasses instead of actually 16 ounces. Looks can be deceiving. Absolutely. And your guests that come through um, that recognize this beer will recognize it for its quality. Um, synonymous, uh, or Trappist, the word Trappist in many ways is almost synonymous with quality. Um, now, it's not exactly an inexpensive beer, as, as all Trappist beers tend to be. Um, number one, they're, they're very coveted. Number two, um, they come with very, very high quality ingredients. Um, and number three, they're also imported. All these things play into the, uh, into the cost factor. Um, but people that recognize the brands um, or people that are into Trappist beers in general um, ex pretty much expect that and, and really don't mind paying the extra dollar when they get in return the quality of a beer like this. And remember, because it's Trappist, uh, that money is not going into um, 
rich uncle Thelonious Monk. It's going into, uh, it, it's going back towards the communities that the Trappist or that the monasteries are in. Mm -hmm. It's going to do things like fix their roof, you know, mm -hmm. fix fix the flood damage. Give them clothes, give them food, absolutely. And it goes back into their community or back into the Catholic Church or other charitable organizations. Mm -hmm. Really, it's a win-win situation for everybody. We get great beer and they get to help people. So yeah. can't really complain about that, can yep. you? Nothing else to say. Cheers. Cheers.